Looks like the Tasmanian Liberals aren't doing too much better because today you've had the member for Bass, Lara Alexander, and the member for Lyons, John Tucker. They've both resigned from the Tasmanian Liberals. They've handed in their related committee appointments and the like. Um, they said in a statement today, quote, the proposed AFL stadium in Hobart was the trigger issue for us. However, it's much more than that. The stadium plan is the most obvious example of a government which has lost its way. Many Tasmanians are battling to meet the rising cost of food, mortgages, rent, as well as many other cost of living expenses that we face every day. The Premier is fiddling with luxuries while Tasmania yearns for action on needs. Now, James, I mean, uh, this is the only remaining Liberal government in the country. They're now in minority government. This doesn't spell good things. No, this is one hell of a pathetic excuse from the two of them to leave a political party. I'm sorry, I'm not here to defend the Liberals. I'm not here to defend anybody for leaving a, a political party at this time uh, when they've now placed that Liberal Party in a minority government position. Uh, look, if they decided to leave because the Tasmanian Liberals were all so pro on the voice to Parliament, maybe I could sort of... I, I get a bit of an understanding there. But to leave because of a bloody stadium? Come on. Hmm. Uh, this is where things need to be thrashed out behind closed doors. Mm. By all means, cross the floor if you want to. That's what the Liberal Party offers these two. I, I have no sympathy for them. I don't think they'll see uh, their re-election after the next election. I, I, I'd be, I'm just buggered to see why they did this. It's, it's pathetic. Well, let's go to the big news internationally today, which has, of course, been the expiration of the Trump-era Title 42, which allowed US border control to return mm. illegal migrants directly back to Mexico. But now, under Biden, they're simply caught and then released within the US. And, I mean, as these images show, thousands of illegal migrants are now pouring across the Texas border. We've seen it all day. And while there's no doubt there are children here who are innocent victims, I think we have to take into account that America's working class, in particular the black community, have been economically decimated by the effects of illegal migrant labour, let alone the stress that millions of illegal migrants place on the American law enforcement, welfare, hospital systems. I mean, Luke, this is a warning, I think, to Australia about how important Operation Sovereign Borders is and that any lapse in vigilance, yeah. you'll see a rush on the borders. I, I agree with that. I think our best friend, uh, the oceans that surround us, obviously, uh, one wonders what it would look like if we were, you know, connected to other to other countries. But you're right, uh, Caleb. But, and you've got to believe in this stuff, mate, don't you? You can't just turn up every so often and say, oh, yes, we're going to keep our borders strong. We want to mm. make sure the Australian taxpayers, you know, have control about who comes here or not. So, yeah, it's things you believe in. Uh, if you believe in it, then you'll put into practice tough policies, but as I say, you know, probably different issues, but thank God we've got a notion around us. Yeah, and I mean, James, we hear from the lefties all the time about, oh, the humanity, the humanity for these people crossing the border. What about the humanity of the people already living in America who get totally undercut by these people who go and get illegal jobs on a couple of dollars an hour? Yeah, you've only mm. got to switch on YouTube and, and you'll see the homelessness that is taking place just off the main thoroughfares of any major capital city in the US. Um, but Luke's 100% right. Our advantage is we're an island nation. And the, the only issue that I see now that, see, COVID's over, and now we're finding more uh, economic refugees trying to claim that they are refugees by flying into Australia. This is mm. the next wave of refugees we've got to deal with in this country. Uh, the Australian on. government need to be tough on it. And, and if they're not tough on it, you're right, they'll swarm this place. They really will. Mm -hmm. Because Australia, as you know, ever since we got the internet, every refugee or wannabe refugee knows Australia is a, a very fair and compassionate country. But at the same time, too, we can only handle so many coming in. Oh, well, there's 1.5 million people coming anyway. So what's a few more on top? Blimey, Charlie. Thank you for your time today, <laughs> Luke and James.